Disney's live action Beauty and the Beast has some design choices that I don't like. So let's fix them. I've already done redesign videos for the live action adaptations of The Little Mermaid and Aladdin, so check those out. Even though I feel like since I posted them, I've already gotten much better ideas for those films, and also some of my edits didn't quite come across how I intended, so who knows, maybe I'll redo them at some point, but let's focus on Beauty and the Beast. For the most part, I think the film has a very beautiful ambiance and strongly captures the French Baroque aesthetic through a more fantastical lens, but there are some design choices that hold it back, and they're some of the most important designs of the whole film. The most widely agreed upon misstep is Belle's underwhelming ball gown, which is supposed to be the breathtaking centerpiece of the film, but is just... They even added CGI in post-production to make the dress look more voluminous and extravagant, but it still is lackluster as hell. Especially after Cinderella had set the bar so high for ultimate show-stopping wardrobe fantasy, how disappointing to downgrade to this high school homecoming dress. It's flimsy and boring and in a quite cheap shade of yellow, regardless that it actually should be gold. Emma Watson was largely responsible for the outcome of this dress, even though I think costume designer Jacqueline Duran still could have done much better with the parameters she was given. Emma Watson wanted Belle to be active and not too glamorized, and she didn't want to wear a corset, and she wanted to be able to comfortably ride a horse in the dress, even if that's a bizarre thing for the character to be thinking about doing if she was just getting ready for a dance. But that's another rabbit hole I could spiral into. The point is, the iconic look did not satisfy and it also didn't fit with the costume and set design of the rest of the film. I don't think these live actions should strictly be set in a specific time period or be historically accurate, because that kind of takes away from the fantasy and escapism, so it's ideal that they get inspired by a general time period and blend it with other eras. It's just weird that in the film, most of the environments are quite authentic to the Rococo era, but then Belle's just wearing that homecoming dress. And I get that she's an outsider and ahead of her time and different, but maybe express that in a way that still fits with the aesthetic of the rest of the film. So this is my Belle design. I tried to maintain that ornate, intricate, 18th century French feel that the film had while maintaining a fairy tale quality and not going too over the top on either side of the spectrum. The gown is gold instead of yellow, not only because that's the color the animated film intended, but it looks a lot more opulent. I put roses on the skirt that match the corset because I thought it'd be a striking, fun, magical detail. I still like it without them though. And the hair also needed to be fixed a bit. I think they could have pushed it even further than what I have going on here. As for Belle's other costumes, I know a lot of people don't like them, but I actually do. And I think her village look, for example, does a great job of leaning into one of the advantages of a live action film, and that's adding detail and dimension. Animation has plenty of advantages over live action, but one thing a live action film has the upper hand on is providing all the visual intricacies, textures, and details. Belle's village costume takes the recognizable look from the animation and doesn't just directly translate its simplicity like a Disney Parks character or Halloween costume, but really takes advantage of its medium by adding nuances without changing the piece beyond recognition. That's exactly what a live action adaptation should be doing on all fronts. I digress. I like this look. 
I think if there was one other costume I'd change, it would probably be her winter look, where I would alter some of the coloring and textures. Okay, moving on to the Beast, who I think was one of the main low points of the film. Not only because his characterization made him out to be a complete asshole rather than a creature with a heart of gold, which was one of the main reasons why the central romance was completely unconvincing, but he doesn't look great either. I mean, one reason is the CGI on him is very wonky, and I think all the other visual effects in the film are quite strong, so he just stands out as distracting. But that, mixed with his final design, is just... Eh, it doesn't work for me. Originally, they were going to use practical effects for the Beast, and they were pretty far along in the pre-production process until they decided to go with full CGI. So I wonder what happened there, because this would look so much better than what we got. I mean, this looks like something that actually takes up space, and something you could actually touch, while the digital beast does not. If their concern was that he wouldn't be able to emote as effectively, I say that enhancing the practical work with CGI the way you would to make a real animal speak and emote in a film like Lady and the Tramp, that would probably look amazing, be a lot less expensive, and significantly more effective than full CGI. Even so, my main problem with the Beast comes from a design perspective. This earlier design they used for the practical model is not the same as the one used in the final film. I have a feeling they thought Beast would come across more likeable if he had a softer look, which isn't the case at all, because the animated character had way harsher, bolder features and was significantly more lovable because the character was portrayed better. Good writing and kind eyes will take you where you need to go. And the whole point of the film is to not judge people by their exterior, so yeah. The softer look the final film went with was also more human, and so it was just uncanny valley, which made the CGI look even more wonky, so yeah. This is my design. I'm no Photoshop expert, so I guarantee you I will look back at this in a couple months and think this doesn't accurately portray what I'm envisioning in my head for the character, but for now it gets the idea across. He has harsher, more stark, more animalistic features, but he also looks very huggable to me, and I think this would read much better on camera, so yeah, moving on. I'm not incredibly eager to change the designs of the other characters, and Cogsworth in particular, I actually really like his design, and once again, it leans into the advantages of the live-action medium. But if given the chance, there are two character designs I would definitely do differently. One is Mrs. Potts. While I do like the style and shape of the teapot itself, and I also like the approach they went with for how they make her emote and speak through the designs on the teapot, I just think the original animated character having the spout be her nose is such a brilliant and iconic design choice that it feels almost blasphemous to not go that route with the live action. And apparently director Bill Condon's reasoning for not doing so was because he thought it made her look like a pig. I don't see the problem. Pigs are cute. And it would give Elephant more than anything, which they're also cute. When trying to whip up my own design, I tried and tried, but I, for the life of me, could not find a reference image of the character that was positioned in the right angle for me to retool it and give her the spout nose. I made some attempts nonetheless, but I will not be sharing. They're horrible, so just use your imagination. Anyway, the 
other character design I don't love is Lumiere, and he doesn't bother me as much, but it just feels kind of lazy to have him be a statue of a human with a little candle plopped on top, instead of finding a way to personify an actual candelabra. Like, when he's running around with his little metallic human body, that's not giving candle. Though I love how the animated film incorporated his face in the candle wax, and that's just as iconic as Mrs. Potts' design, it's one thing that I don't think would work in live action. That's an advantage of animation. So, this is my design, and it may not look much different from how he appears in the film when he's in his catatonic state, but it is and he would be looking like this throughout the entire film instead of morphing to have a human body when convenient. Now, I want to see those gangly ass arms gesturing and swinging about through that Be Our Guest sequence. And yes, he does have a face, it's a little more exaggerated and kind looking, so yeah. As far as the sets go, like I said, I think they create a very opulent, textured atmosphere, and the vibe of the film is very beautiful, but there are some adjustments to be made. The library, for one, was so boring and dull in comparison to the lavish, grand one in the animation, and yes, I'm gonna compare this film to the animation because it inherently is designed to evoke the animation. It doesn't have to look exactly like it, and I don't want it to, but it should at least try to match its power in its own way. So, we're gonna go with the more breathtaking escapist library. And while the ballroom in the film is very ornate and gorgeous, I think having towering grand windows all around acting as a skylight would transport it to a whole new level because once again, try to match the power of the animated film. Okay, so those are at least my main points regarding the design choices of Beauty and the Beast. Please let me know your thoughts and also please tell me what you'd like to see next. I have a list of videos I want to make and haven't gotten to because I've been occupied lately, but I'd like to know what I should prioritize, so yes, let me know, um, love you, bye.